So I'm Miller, Lord Aho here, thank you for joining me as always, and it is a slightly different video today. Now, when anybody passes away, I always kind of second guess, should I make a video, should I not make a video? It seems kind of uh, gratuitous in many ways, because I didn't know this person, and there will be true members of his friendship group and his family who are mourning uh, properly. But then I started sort of having conversations with uh, some of my friends that uh, also felt the same way as me, and you know what? I thought to myself, sometimes it's just nice to have a chat. And if you click this video, I can only imagine that you uh, feel the same way too. But yes, uh, yesterday, uh, late afternoon over here in the UK, it came out that Kevin Conroy had passed away at only 66 years old. I mean, we don't know what the cause of death is, but 66 years old is no, is no age to pass away. And if randomly you have clicked this video and you don't know, Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman in the animated series, in the video games. I mean, there's no point. He was in the injustice. There's no point going on about all the stuff he did do. He was basically Batman for a long ass time. And as someone that is a little bit obsessed with Batman, love Batman. <laughs> if I panned across the room right now, you would see how much Batman stuff I actually do have. Got a little plaque over there that's the whole you either die a hero or leave yourself long enough to become the villain. Don't know why I wanted that. It's not even an inspirational quote. But, you know, I can't remember this sort of uh, verbatim or how it actually happened. But I do know that when I was young, and I started getting into Batman. One of the first things I found after the comics, after the graphic novels and all of that, was Batman the Animated Series. And I tell you this, my word did it inspire me. And it brought me so much joy. In fact, you know, I try not to tweet and do anything like that when people pass away because I don't want to pretend that, oh, my grief, my grief, I didn't know the guy. But he did have a massive impact on me. Hence why I wanted to make this video too. Because when I started watching the animated series, have you ever seen Batman the Animated Series? It's not like a cartoon. And I was probably watching, who knows, Care Bears and Jason and the Argonauts and Thundercats. And these were great things. <laughs> these were wonderful, wonderful things. But when you watch Batman the Animated Series, or at least to me, it had a heart to it, right? There was, some, there was just some kind of depth, some kind of extra to it. Some of the stories they went into with the Joker as well, obviously played by Mark Hamill. But the thing that really kind of held it all together was Kevin Conroy. Now, when I was a fetus, I didn't know Kevin Conroy. I didn't know that he was voicing the Batman or anything like that. But the way that he just totally understood the character, and again, this would have been way over my head when I was a child. And he talked about this in subsequent interviews, how when he first sat down and when he first took the job and when he first started getting into it, etc., etc., he was like, okay, well, Bruce Wayne's got to be this guy and Batman's got to be this guy. We have to play them as two different individuals, which hasn't necessarily been the case in mainstream media when it came to Batman. I'm pretty sure he said in another interview that he based uh, Bruce Wayne on the Scarlet Pimper Nickel or whatever, nickel, whatever, <laughs> whatever that movie was, because, you know, he wanted to portray Bruce Wayne as the playboy that he'd been made out with in the comics. In the sense, he's a bit funny, he's a bit crazy. I mean, he really wasn't. He still did have this stern side to him. But it was very, very apparent that when he became Batman, he was a different person. When he became Bruce Wayne, he was a different person. And it was throughout the animated series that I started to realize, oh, wait, no, the mask is Bruce Wayne. Batman is the real, <laughs> it's the real individual that is totally scarred by his parents' death. And Bruce Wayne is the mask that he has to put on because that's his social life that you know you have to pretend that everything is okay because that's what is expected of us and i don't know whether i mean again when i'm but seven six seven years whatever it is i'm not going to understand this on this level but when you do get older you do kind of i mean i'm probably put on somewhat of a front now because there's a camera here and there's lights there's a microphone and people expect a certain something from me and that's going to be the same when you go to a family event a birthday a bar mitzvah a bris a christmas whatever the hell it is right there's always somewhat of a mask we put on and I think it was during the animated series especially, and the comics, of course, because that's the source material. But during the animated series where I truly started to understand the dichotomy and the awesomeness of Batman, and it just had such an edge to it. And that's something that, you know, everybody deserves credit with, of course. It was a cartoon, but it felt adult almost. Like, I remember watching it sometimes. I shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> but somehow my parents were cool with it. Again, because if you sat down as a mum and dad, you'd be like, okay, yeah, there's some things that are potentially freaking him out. But look, he looks fine. So we'll continue on with it. And I tell you, it wouldn't have worked without Kevin Conroy's voice. Hence why he's doing that in the 90s. And then all the way up to the late 20 teens. And I don't know what his last Batman job was, but he was doing that voice. And of course, when Rocksteady made the Batman games, who did they go to? Kevin Conroy. Why are those games so good? Because of Kevin Conroy. The way that you know, there's so much, there's so many monologues in Batman, in the, in the Rocksteady Batman video games. And one of the reasons, obviously, is for exposition and telling you where to go. But without Kevin Conroy's voice, it just doesn't work. Because he knew how to get those points across. And every single thing he said carried weight. And every single thing carried gravitas. And when you did get to the big moments, he was able to, you know, make that twice as impactful. Like in Arkham City, I believe it is, when you find the, um, uh, the death spot <laughs> of his parents behind the theatre... 
He doesn't say much, obviously he gets down on one knee and stuff, but everything he says around it, oh my gosh, the man was just a genius. And to say that his calling was to play Batman, I think it's 100% fair. Maybe a bit of hyperbole given what's happened. But I, w I would stand by that massively. And I don't think I realised quite how much of an impact he had until I saw that news and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And again, I hate saying this because I did not know him and there'll be people that are going through true grief right now. But in terms of a fan to... Uh, the, the hero is that the right word or someone you look up to like an inspiration i mean he was right he really, really really was right up there because he just understood the character and his understanding of the character allowed me to understand it and then you know fall into this massive vat of goo <laughs> that i've never been able to to, to get out of and of course that you know if anybody involved pass away i'm sure you'd say oh without them this wouldn't have happened without them this wouldn't have happened but you know Kevin Conroy to me was the glue, you know, he absolutely was the person that made all of that stuff tick and how he was able to do it. Because I mean, you know, especially in the modern era, so many times people are, oh, we've got to change that person's voice. We've got to do something different. We've got to grab the attention differently. I mean, that's why Chris Pratt is going to be the voice of Mario. Like, why isn't it Charles Martinet? And we'll get into that in another video, maybe. There's reasons for it, though. And I can understand them. Do I necessarily agree with them? No, but I can understand them. Whereas Kevin Conroy, he was the guy that you always turn to. And... He probably could have starred in a movie, to be honest. I don't know what his acting ability like was in front of camera. I've never seen it. But his voice was so iconic, he probably could have gotten away with it. But it's like every single time, it wasn't a live action movie. Who should we get in? Well, you better ask Kevin Conroy. And when it wasn't Kevin Conroy, they would be like, eh, well, it's okay. And you'd have to get used to it. And I would almost go as far to say that because we did have so many live action Batmans, I mean, I'll forget one I always do, but Adam West, Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck, Christian Bale, obviously Robert Pattinson recently, Val Kilmer. There'll be other ones too. Because they kind of change when it comes to the movies. I mean, there, there are iconic takes and there are ones that are better than others. I think Michael Keaton is the best. I think Christian Bale is very, very good. But because Kevin Conroy did it for such a long time, because he never dropped the ball ever, and he did it in so many variations of so many different guises, to me, in many ways, he is the definitive Batman. Like He is Batman. He was Batman, and he forever will be Batman to me. When I hear that voice, I'm like, it's Batman. When I see Christian Bale, I don't think it was Batman. When I see Michael Keaton, I don't go, it's Batman. But with Kevin Conroy, that was always the emotion that stirred up inside of me, which may be another reason why, you know, it um, sucked so much. It sucked so much regardless. But I probably had him, deservedly so, I would say, on a pedestal, because to me, he was Batman, right? He was the closest thing to a living Batman that we were ever, that, that we were ever going to get. So I don't want to keep ranting and raving about this, but I did want to just talk about it for, what, five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes. I can't see the, the time over there, whatever it may be. So more importantly than my stupid feelings, uh, you know, again, thoughts and feelings and positive whatever with, uh, with his friends, with his family, can't even imagine it. it. I mean, it must be a really interesting, is not the right word, but it must be a really, I don't know what the right word would be, but a journey, hate that term, but you know what I'm saying, to not only lose someone that you care about, but then to see so many other people pour out with love as well. I mean, that's probably a testament to the guy that he had an impact on people. And he definitely had an impact on me because, you know, celebrities pass away and it's, it's, there's no, it's human beings at the end of the day. We have to remember that. And of course, they just get public coverage. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. But some are always going to mean more or less to you, depending on what your personal relationship was to them. And Kevin Conroy was out of there. It's like when Leslie Nielsen passed away. <laughs> I love Leslie Nielsen so much. I'm not sure we've ever talked about that. I felt like my granddad had died. And it was the same with the macho man, Randy Savage. It was that 2011 or whatever. I remember I was driving to a gig down to Bournemouth and I just pull over for five minutes. And I was actually, because um, I heard that one, I tell you how I knew about that one too, tangent. It was on BBC Radio 1. So, you know, I was literally listening to the radio and they told me and they pulled over. Whereas this one's a bit different. I was driving. I got out of my car, you know, check social media. And there it was. So this is just my daft tribute to, to Kevin Conroy, I suppose. I hope it doesn't come across as insulting or anything like that because I do get it. I do think it could, uh, you know, be construed that way. But I really hope that it doesn't because he was a hero of mine. And I'm not even 100% sure I realized that till today. But here we are. And again, there's a comment section down there. You know, please feel free to share your memories. And if I have said anything that's untoward, you know, educate me. I think that's always good, but it certainly does come from a good place. So, Kevin Conroy, thank you. Genuinely, you <laughs> have given more than I ever thought possible. Right? You, I, I cannot tell you how much I flip and love Batman. And without the animated series and without all your work, like Arkham City and Arkham Asylum, uh, sorry, Arkham City and Arkham Knight, I gave 10 out of 10s to. And I stand by the Arkham Knight one. I know the Batmobile was a bit crap, but I don't care. The rest of the game was so good. 
and Arkham City especially. Oh my gosh, that has such an important place in my heart when it comes to video games. One of my favorite video games of all time. And it wouldn't have been the same without that guy. So I'll leave it there because I'm ranting and my raving. I shall give you a salute. Thank you very, very much for allowing me to get into what I deem to be the greatest character ever. I think I genuinely do mean that. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.